Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. We're here talking about tonight's football matchup, Brentwood facing Franklin. We've got Coach Alex Melton for, I think, the fourth time this year, fourth Coach. Time. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. And Brentwood Coach Clint Finch for the first time. So welcome to the show, Coach. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> we were talking about this before. Obviously, tonight's a big region matchup. Uh, between these two teams, Brentwood 2-0, and Franklin 0-2. Oh One of the oldest rivalries in w WCS. Uh, the young folks say, hey, Franklin, it's Battle of Franklin. It's Franklin versus Centennial. Brentwood, it's Battle of the Woods. It's Brentwood, Ravenwood. But you guys, because y'all been in this game several times, which we'll get into, this is the old one. This is that original kind of rivalry in WCS, right, Coach Finch? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, and I think when you, you talk about the parents and, and people that have lived in the community for a long time, uh, you know, they, they remember when it wasn't a Centennial High School and it wasn't a Ravenwood High School and it was the two oldest high schools, you know, two biggest oldest high schools in the county. So it still means a lot to people, I think. Coach Melton? I mean, same. So we were, we were there, and I know you're going to talk about this later, but we were there together in early 2000s. It was back in the day, I guess now, but <laughs> it's kind of when Centennial was new and that Franklin Centennial rivalry hadn't really, I guess, really revved up yet. But I mean, it was, you know, a couple times a year they were playing each other in, in regular season and again in the playoffs using the quarterfinals. So, I mean, it's always been a huge, as far as, as, since I've been here, it's been a huge rivalry and I know it's one of the oldest ones uh, in the county. I thought this was interesting. So, third matchup as head coaches, mm -hmm. but Coach Finch, we were talking about this. 16 years you've coached at Brentwood total, yes. correct? Yes. And then for you, Coach Melton, not only the three at Franklin, but 2007 to 2011, you guys were together yep. yes, sir. at Brentwood. And during that time period, played eight times. Yep. Uh, Brentwood won six of the eight, which, Coach Melton, you were happy about the thing. Uh, then I was, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, not so much. But during that time period, uh, played three times in the playoffs. I was looking that since 2001 – these schools have played seven times in the playoffs, but during that period you guys were together, that was a pretty special time in terms of that rivalry, Coach Mountain. It was. I mean, and it was a great – you're talking about atmosphere, and they're great now, but you just remember being a couple deep on the track and just, uh, you know, one of them went into double overtime. So it was, you know, you play them regular season, and pretty much every year you're looking Franklin uh, – Brentwood was looking Franklin quarterfinals at that point. Pretty exciting time. Coach, uh, any memories that time? At, at the time you were – Freshman head coach, Coach Finch, 7 to 11. Coach Melton was the DB guy. Mm -hmm. uh, how about those times together? It was, it was fun. You know, we had a good little run there for a while. I, will t I tell everybody that I think my first experience was in 2006 playing at Franklin. Uh, and I'd been coaching two-way ball uh, out in Cheatham County. And I still, that kind of got me hooked on 6A Williamson County football. It was one of the coolest atmospheres ever. I just remember standing on the sideline charting plays for Coach Crawford and thinking, this is really cool. <laughs> so it was just an awesome environment. It, it is. I still, you know, I, usually when I'm at the games, I'll stand on the sidelines and every week mm. it gets me. It's like, man, this is, this is the spot. Yeah, sure. It really is. Uh, so since 2001, just some recent history, Brentwood leads the series 19-10, seven times in the playoff, Brentwood four and three. And Brentwood, the last nine matchups, I think it is, yep, has gotten the W. So Franklin looking to get that stopped here uh, tonight. And Coach Mountain, I want to mention this to you. Homecoming. I know you were part of making the decision sure. that you have you have the cupcake of the schedule right. lined That's up for homecoming. Do. So yeah. talk about that. Yeah. I mean you just look down your schedule it's easier than Brentwood. <laughs> Uh, obviously not. I didn't have much of a say in that, but uh, I mean they're on the schedule. That's when it fell, so we'll play. We'll, you know, homecomings. Kids love it. Uh, it's about them. It's about the kids there. But we we understand. Our kids know there's a football game to be played, and they'll they'll approach it the right way. Um, they're mature. They approach it the right way. They did it last last year. It was Centennial. Had a really good game against them. So you know I don't don't worry about too, that too much as long as you got your kids focused and all that. They can enjoy that stuff. Uh, but understanding that it comes down to the game at the end. Well, let's talk about that a little. And by the way, I misspoke. It's the last seven times Brentwood has, has come out on top. Coach Melton, so during that day, I'm assuming there's going to be some activities going on, people walking around, doing their thing. At any point, do you kind of take the football guys aside and say, hey, let's go in here and eat together? What, what do you do during that day? Well, they, I mean, we do a parade downtown. It's really, it's really cool, really neat. You know, they shut downtown Franklin down for a little bit and, you know, we, we walk, it's not far. Um, 
we don't walk there, but we walk in the parade. And then, you know, they have activities, food trucks and things like that. So our guys, the afternoon is pretty open. They can choose what they do, but it's, I mean, a lot of it's just kind of hanging around and stuff like that. There's not a lot of activity that they do physically. Um, so we, the locker room's open. They know they can come in there and rest. You know, we have them drinking water and all that stuff all day. So as a group, we don't technically meet. We know let them go and enjoy. Um, but they, again, they know we communicate ahead of time. You can go have fun, do, you know, act responsibly like you're supposed to anyway. Um, but if you need to come in here to the air conditioning the locker room, it's open. Um, hang out, rest, whatever you need to do. Coach Finch, I was on your campus, I think maybe, was it the Summit game last week? It was. Same thing. I got there and I was, I was taking something to Brentwood Middle. I'm like, oh, I picked the perfect day to drive <laughs> through the parking lot. Same kind of thing. What did you guys do? Was it similar to what Coach is talking about? Like, hey, have a good time, but get off your feet if you can. If you need to come in the locker room, let's do that. Yeah, and, and we talk a lot of, to our kids about, you know, we, we want them to enjoy homecoming. You know, we talk about we want you to build floats, and, and we hope you can find a little girl to take to the dance and, and all that fun <laughs> stuff. But, you know, really a lot of that stuff is for the students, and we just kind of talk about, hey, the, the ball game's for us. Everybody goes to the dance. Everybody can ride the floats and, and, and build floats, but you're the only guys that get to play in the game uh, and so yeah our guys just do a really good job we're pretty old we're a bunch of seniors and and they just kind of enjoy their homecoming day and then we bring them back in about 4 30 that afternoon and, and go back to work so it's nice to have kids that you can just kind of trust to, to stay locked in and do what they're supposed to do but they're old kids so they should you know it does and i get it as a coach like homecoming or senior night if it's a tough opponent that makes it kind of difficult but i do think it's got that throwback kind of feel i think 20, 30 years ago, it probably was mm -hmm. one of the bigger games. The big game mm -hmm. for homecoming. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I really do, yeah. but it doesn't make uh, Coach Melton feel any better. It doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> not, just, not this easy anyway. But Let's talk a little bit about last week's game. We'll start with Brentwood, Coach. You take care of Overton. Uh, to me, and it's 38 nothing. I think 21 maybe nothing at the half. Mm -hmm. Those games as a coach sometimes I think can be a little scary because mm -hmm. when you look at it on paper and you look at the film, the kids know. Yeah. We're better than they are. We ought to win. Sometimes it seems like as a team you kind of can lay an egg, but your team went about it businesslike, took care of it. 100%. And, and we talk and, and try not to say too much in terms of coach speak here, but we talk about, look, we don't – we play to our standards. We play to our expectations. You know, we, we think we're a good football team this year, and it doesn't matter who you're playing. Uh, you know, you go out and you should play up to your standard. And we even talked at halftime that we didn't think it was a great first half for us. We thought we were a little sloppy in some things. And, and at the end of the night, you have to sign your name to every game you play. And we said, hey, when this thing's over, let's be willing to sign our name, uh, saying, like, you know, we're going to own this game, right? We, this is how we played. And our kids played really well in the second half. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously they struggled a little bit. Overton struggles a little bit right now. Uh, but they played hard, and at the end of the day, we think our kids did a good job of, of handling that week of, of preparation that Friday night. Love the efficiency of Baylor Hayes, your quarterback, 11 for 13, 122 yards, three touchdowns, three different guys. Mm -hmm. One thing I've noticed about your team, Coach, and again, the first time on the show, a lot of different people contributing mm -hmm. offensively and defensively. Mm -hmm. uh, five receivers in double digits right now. Uh, six different receivers uh, with touchdown uh, receptions right now. Uh, that's, you know, at the end of the day, we're at our core, we're an air raid team, so we're five guys out on most pass routes if, if you watch us. And we've got a quarterback right now doing a really good job of figuring out which one is open uh, and, and doing a good job of, of kind of sharing the wealth and, and delivering the football. Uh, obviously, you've got good receivers and you've got a quarterback that can deliver, and there's a lot of trust between those guys right now. So that's it's been a really cool thing to watch. And I think it does make us kind of hard to defend. You know, we're not zeroed in on one receiver. You know, all those guys are, are 10 to 15 catches each. So it's been been pretty special. Coach, talk about your offense a little bit uh, now, not personnel, but style as the coordinator and as the head coach. Similar? Uh, I think so. I think, you know, you, you always have to, you've got to have a system, okay? But it, I think a good coach is going to take that system and he's going to sit there and make it fit his personnel. Uh, at the end of the day, last year, I think we were a little bit more run heavy. We played a little bit more old school brand of football last year. Uh, with some really talented older receivers, uh, with a quarterback that, that quite honestly deals it pretty well, uh, feels really comfortable in the pocket and, and doing stuff like that, uh, we're probably, you know, we're throwing it a little bit more, and I think we're probably taking a few more shots this year. That's just, um, it's just different. Each year's group is different, and it's my job as, as head coach, it's my job as coordinator to find a way to, to make that work. 
Coach uh, Melton, another tough game. 17, or excuse me, 13-7. Uh, you take on a, really a, an improving Summit team, very similar to your team, I think, in a lot of ways. It's a big region win for them. I know a disappointment for you guys. You had some opportunities early to score. You had some opportunities late. Now, obviously, they had some opportunities too, and you came through and stopped them. But talk about having those opportunities you just quite couldn't cash in on early in the game and late in the game to score, puts more points on the board. Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely have to – very little room for error, if any. We have to take advantage of those. So, you know, they had a long drive and, you know, do a great job of running their quarterback. I think he ran it 30-something times, uh, which creates an extra gap. And so it's kind of sometimes hard to defend. He's, he's a really good athlete. He's got a really good uh, tailback as well and a good up front. So, um, you know, we knew we had to get off the field, get the ball to our offense. We knew we had to take advantage of every offensive opportunity that we had. Uh, we had some. We weren't able to take advantage of all of them, as many as we needed to. Um, two turnovers. They scored on both the turnovers, off both the turnovers. So we've got to eliminate that. You know, but the kids continued. I say it every week. It's like a broken record, but it's the truth. I mean, they continued to fight and play um, and want it so bad. I mean, you know, and so you, and we want it bad for them, for them, student section, for the high school, for the community. You know, so the only option is, is to keep working and keep fighting, and they do that. Um, but we have to eliminate turnovers. You know, we, we've got to, you know, and even we got, we got uh, had a chance to score. We punted it, pinned them, and we were, you know, we couldn't get a stop, didn't get enough to get a stop defensively to get the ball back. We were close a couple times. You know, we got it by about a foot twice, I think, and that's it's a game of inches. But you've got, we've, got to, we've got to finish those, make better calls, uh, put the kids in better position. Coach, I thought it was interesting. They had the ball, I think it was 32 minutes out of 48, but you still only give up 13 points. I had 73 snaps offense, I think. I mean, your defense had to be exhausted, but they kept coming through. To only give up 13 points, but oh, they have the ball that long? Well, we keep making them snap it. I mean, it's, the positive is they keep snapping it. Maybe they make a mistake. We got a turnover on that first drive from making them snap it again and again and again. Um, you know, and then we weren't able to take advantage of that and turned it back over, which, you know, that's just that's part of it. That's one of the things we got to eliminate. But, I mean, yeah, they do a great job of controlling the football, controlling the clock keeping their offense on the field and your offense off. That's, you know, we've said that before. That's, that helps your defense a lot by doing that, you know. Um, and so they, they do a really good job of that. So we've, we've just got to do a better job of getting off the field when we have the opportunity. And when we get the ball, we get opportunities on offense, we've got to do a better job of taking advantage of those. Coach, talk about this. I know we, we mentioned Brewer Wilson, seems like, each week, and Wills Jackson, Lucas, we talk about him. But then you have a sophomore, Luke Thompson. Luke Thompson. Scores a touchdown. That's a name we haven't heard a lot of. And then Thompson King, a junior, 10 tackles. So nice to hear some other names, some other guys stepping up, getting opportunities. Yes, and they, they've been great all year. I mean, there are two safeties. Uh, Luke is a, is a safety, and so is Thompson. So, you know, the way our safety was fitting, it put him in the opportunity to make some tackles. It's not always great when your safety's making the tackles. <laughs> but he was, you know, he was making them closer to the line of scrimmage based on our fits, you know, and our, our reads and keys. And then Luke's been a sophomore and he's played – um, all year at safety for us. We're trying to get him more in offense as we as we progress. He's just a great athlete. He's a big time track guy uh, as well. So you know he's tall. He's got really good hands, and he's young. So that you know all those things are good. And Thompson, you know, to his credit, it's a kid. We had an outside linebacker last year and did a play great as a sophomore at outside linebacker. And we had to move him to safety, um, you know, for roster reasons and things like that. And he's done it. He's just a he's a winner, man. Just like the rest of them. He he'll do what you ask him to do. Um, and he does a great job with it. Super athlete. He is. Coach, something, you know, you talked about the turnovers, got to fix that. But I look and you only have two penalties. That's a pretty clean that's, game. That's clean on that, that end of it. I mean, it really that, was. That's, that's, that's low. Good. It is low. Kid, you know, again, did a great job of that, moving her feet, eliminating holds and things like that. Didn't have any, you know, uh, foolish penalties or things like that. So uh, it, was, it was a good game. It didn't end in our favor. Um, we've got to change the result. Coach, uh, Finch, Coach Melton, I've talked about this three times, so I won't make him do it again. Talk about the region, though. Uh, this will be the first time that you've been on the show, obviously. Uh, you guys at 2-0, and Ravenwood at 2-0, and Indy Summit 1-1, one and one, Franklin and Overton both 0-2. I, I say, I know you guys won't say that, but outside of Overton, you take any of those five teams, great opportunity to advance in the playoffs. Uh, 100%. You just got to make it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, we were talking in the office the other day, and, and of course we go back to last year, you know, when you got down to the last game of the year and, and you four teams could have finished one through four. Um, you know, we, we look at, you know, right now it, it, things are going really well for us, but we remember last year 
that you know it was it was a seven point game with Franklin. It was a six or seven point game with Centennial. Everybody's really really close, and and it's kind of you know talking to our defensive coordinator the other day. He said it's kind of humbling to realize that it's just a, a play or two could swing one way or the other, and you you'd be a playoff team or not be a playoff team in this region. Um, you know, we use the word parity a lot with Williamson County football, but it's true. I mean, everybody is going to play everybody tough uh, every night of the season. And, and everybody's dangerous, you know, and, and everybody, you better come, come ready to play and, and bring your A game because it's just people take a lot of pride and these schools take a lot of pride and they're really well-coached football teams. So one of the things that makes it hard to coach here, but one of the things that makes it really fun to coach here as well. Coach Mountain and Coach Finch were sort of alluded to it there. I looked at seven nothing was the score last year. Yes, sir. I mean that was a battle. It was a battle. It was it was a great football game. I mean that's that's old school Franklin it was. Brentwood. Right? It, was. I mean, it, it was. It was. It was turn turn back the clock night. It was. So <laughs> the offensive coordinator and coach Finch is like that's no good. The DC <laughs> and you's like yes seven to nothing. That's the way no, we he's, want it. He's a it was a good he's he's a football guy. It was a good guy. <laughs> it was. It was a good guy. So yeah, I love those games. You know, I think. Before I really got to know some of you guys, I probably would have said, and I like it. I like to see those mm -hmm. games with a lot of points, but sometimes those low scoring where it's like going to the dentist kind of deal, mm -hmm. those are fun too. Well, you've got to be able to win the high scoring games. You've got to be able to win the, the seven nothing, ten to seven games as well. And you know, good football teams have to be able to win both of those. And, and if you've got defense, special teams, and offense, you put yourself in a position to win. You know, whatever kind of game you got to play. On offense, you better score one more point than the other guy. So. <laughs> Name of the game, Coach yeah. Melton. One, one more point. One more. Let's talk a little bit about your offensive, uh, Coach Finch. You, you're, the, you're the QB move in school right now. You right have, now. It works out great for you last year. It's yeah. working out great this year. Yeah. Uh, Baylor's really played well. A uh, special kid uh, moved in. Huge difference, and I tell everybody this, you know, when Grant moved in last year, he came in after dead period. Uh, Baylor basically enrolled in December, but he was with us through our entire off-season program. Uh, there in those January, February, when we work out, you know, early a.m., like 5.30, uh, there we moved after school through spring practice there all summer. That, you know, Baylor's a talented kid, uh, but I think where I've always been impressed with Baylor, and, and, and we get – you know, we get a lot of move-in kids, right? I mean, we've had, there are five transfers to Brentwood High School this year. You know, you got a great school system, a great community. People are going to come to your school. Uh, and I tell all those guys, like, listen, if, if you will show that you're willing to put in the work, okay, that's what our guys are concerned with, okay? Show that you're willing to be there, put in the work, do your job in the weight room, do your job in the conditioning sessions, do your job at practice, you'll be accepted. And that's what Baylor's done. Uh, besides being a really good football player, he's a really, really good teammate. And what we found out is a really good leader, very level-headed kid. Uh, when things are going good, uh, he's, he's pumping everybody up and being positive. And, and when things aren't going good, he's the same guy. And so you've got to be a level-headed kid at quarterback, and, and that's exactly what he is. Coach, you stole my thunder a little bit on the offense. I was going to talk about Luke Thompson, but you did a great job of talking about what he's done both sides of the ball. Talk about some of your guys that are having to play both ways. I mean, Luke's one of them. Sean Gacka's, uh, Gacka's another guy that we've had. You know, was a corner for us, and we've moved him to he was receiver, moved him to run back to get the ball in his hands. He, you know, he's a football player. Uh, he sees he sees things well with the ball in his hand, makes good cuts, makes good decision with it. Uh, he's quick in his cuts and is and is able to get upfield. After that, defensively, I mean, he does a great job of he understands our coverages. You know, he's been in the system a couple of years now, but he's just. Like I said, he's a football player. He's smart. He picks up on stuff and knows what we're trying to do. Coach Finch, let's talk about your defense a little bit. They've played well. I think some would say, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, the strength of your team mm -hmm. may be both lines. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, really good job. Like So many of our guys that are seeing, we have 30 seniors on this football team. If you went back to 2021, a lot of those guys as sophomores played a lot of snaps for us. So those guys are really third-year players for us. So guys like Seth Adams, Ruger Humble, uh, our inside linebackers, uh, Will Adcock and, and uh, Max Orfici, outside linebacker Maddox McKim, other outside linebacker Cooper McAfee, all those guys have played a lot of snaps for us. And, and we felt like going in, our front seven on defense was going to be a strength. We were a little concerned about the back end. Uh, but Johnny Silvestri has stepped up playing uh, boundary safety, and, and Jack Zock has stepped up playing field safety. Uh, and the offensive line, same deal. Joe Collins is in his third year starting. Uh, Ron Barker is another senior, played a lot as a sophomore, junior uh, as well. So 
100%, we feel like that's kind of, you know, and you've got to be good up front in football, right? Coaching cliche, but, but we do feel like we're pretty good up front this year, and, and a lot of that's because we've had some guys that played a lot of downs for us. Coach Melton, with your team, I, I keep saying this about your team, and I know you're about this week, and it's all you can worry about, but he talks about guys, hey, they've been playing a lot of snaps three years. I feel like that's where your team is sort of heading to. You've got a lot of guys who've played some snaps as juniors, and as seniors next year, it's going to be a lot, a lot of snaps. So right. there's got to be some, some positive in that with your team not only this year but looking forward to it. <clears throat> there is. I mean, every rep matters. So, I mean, whether it's practice rep, scrimmage rep, game rep, and these guys have gotten, you know, a lot of them, several of them played as sophomores, getting more of them playing time this year, mixing in some sophomores this year to get some playing time. So we'll be, you know, our seniors have played, have done, all of our seniors have done a great job as well this year. You know, they always do. They lead. And we've got several of those playing as well. So. You know, next year we'll be uh, should be a little more senior, junior heavy than we have been in the past. But you know, it, you, you every rep counts. So every rep they're getting each week. You know, I told one of them the other day. I said, "You're not a you're not a sophomore anymore." You know, and they're not after they take that first rep. And so um, we just keep building on that, keep trusting it. Um, you know, keep developing them in the off season, mentally, physically, and uh, you hope each year. You know, graduation is going to happen every year, so you, you hope you are able to to overcome that each year. Coach, uh, again, we talked about earlier gutsy performance by your defense. They're on the field. There's a lot of plays, but they only give up 13 points. What are you looking for for your team to improve not only this game but going forward to get them off the field a little quicker? You like the not giving up points, but what are some improvements you need to make to maybe get off that field a little bit quicker I, in some of these possessions? I think we've got to, we've got to do a better job of taking away space, you know, um, make t making tackles easier for us. I've said this before. The, one of the hardest plays in football is an open field tackle. And so offensively, you're trying to create space. Defensively, you're trying to take that away. So we've got to do a better job in the open field of taking away space and keeping a two-yard gain to a two-yard gain, not letting a two-yard gain become a five-yard gain, which keeps the chains moving and things like that. So, and that's easier said than done, right? I mean, they've got good running backs. They've got a really good offensive line. You know, they spread you out. So it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but we've got to be able to get off the field and get the ball back to our offense. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that, and Coach Finch, you can say something about this too. I'd, I'd be interested in what both of you say. In basketball sport, I coach, you talk about speed and you're worried about speed, but as I watch your game, to me it's a bigger deal because of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's only so much space on a basketball court because you only got 10 guys out there. Right. But you get loose and somebody's quick on your field, it's over. <laughs> you know, it's funny, you're talking about taking away space, and, and our whole thing was let's create space this week. You know, that's just the way, way, way it works. On offense, you're trying to spread them out and, and, and force them to make open field tackles because that's hard. You know, we were talking the other day in the office that people talk about maybe tackling's not as good as it used to be, but I'm like, well, they used to also line up in the eye formation right. and run between the tackles. Right. The box. When you, yeah, yeah, when you get out there and that guy's got, you know, 10 yards and you've got to close that space, that can make it tough. So, absolutely, defense wants to take it away and offense wants to expand it. Well, so, you talk about that, the game's changed, but also, uh, this is something we've talked about over the past few years, the way we... Not, not that you don't prepare your guys tackling, but practice is different than it used to be too, right, Coach, in terms of how people practice? It is. I mean, it's, it's, you have days that are physical, but it's, I mean, back when we were younger, <laughs> it was every day just, just popping, hitting each other, and just every day. I think it's kind of with concussions and all that and the, and, the, and the knowledge of it now, I guess, um, there's a little bit more. You, obviously, you have to take a little bit more precautions and things like that with heat and everything. There wasn't any of that kind of many, many years ago, right? So you, you definitely have to, and it's player safety comes first. And so you got to, there's a fine line between preparing them physically, but also keeping them fresh, protecting them to get them to Friday night. Coach Melton, what are the, what are the technique challenges when you're not tackling quite as much in practice? Definitely don't tackle to the ground like we used to. Right. No, I mean, you can stay up, you <clears> try to keep your head out of it. I mean, you want to keep their head out of it um, and then take away that space. A lot of times, you know, one of the things you fight a lot of times with kids is, is they, they stop their feet. And when they stop their feet, they reach. When your feet stop, the first thing you do is reach. Or when you reach, your feet stop. You know, that kind of, so it's getting all that together to put your body in the best position where you're not reaching, where you're not having to throw your head in there, um, you know, to keep your shoulders over your toes so you can some bring, bring some effort to the tackle to get them wrapped up. Talk a little special teams. Coach Finch, so far this year in all phases of the special teams, been pretty happy so far? Really happy. Uh, two senior kickers. Uh, first of all, just in general, when you talk about kick cover teams and, and punt teams, 
uh, a lot of guys that are bought into that. One of the things that we do because we two platoon, uh, we try to, you know, we'll have a lot of starters that, that, that are on, you know, maybe they start on offense, but they're on kickoff return, or maybe they start on defense, they're on punt. Uh, so it allows us to get some, some good athletes out there all night. Uh, Isaac Hayes has done a great job for us, uh, you know, kicking off. And I, I, I had his stats the other day, I think he's five of six on field goal, 27 of 28 on extra points, something like that. A lot of touchbacks too, that's huge. Uh, I think 22 out of 27 touchbacks. It's, it's pretty easy to run a kickoff team out there when, when it's gonna go in the end zone, right? That's one of the things that makes me nervous is when that, that thing comes short. Uh, and then also Luke Armstead as a punter uh, has done a great job for us as well. And, and I think both those guys are gonna get a chance to, to punt and kick in college. And, and they've just been, you know, historically we've been blessed to have really good kickers there, and, and it's one, one third of the game is your kicking game, and, and we're blessed to have two guys that are doing a really good job. Coach Melton, special teams, is that a place, and we've talked again quite a bit about your special teams, kickers done a good job. Is that a good place to get experience for some guys too on those special teams? It is, I mean, you, you've got to be careful because special teams are huge. I mean, one of the quickest ways to get beat is to get a punt blocked or a kickoff returned on you. Um, that just changes the flow of the game so much, so you've got to be, you know, you trust everybody you put out there, you trust. Um, you just got to make sure, you, as a coach, you got to make sure you've got the, you got the right guys in the right spot to give them the best shot. Yeah. Which makes it, I don't know if either one of you saw this, I've watched it a couple times, uh, one of those SEC network kind of things with Texas A&M, had regular students. Oh, yeah. As the, as Where the, the 12th man team. came from, I, I think. Mean, yeah. That just seems bizarre when you think about it because you talk about how important. Hey, we're going to bring some guys out of the – Nuts. Did you, you see that, Coach? I did. I did. It's fascinating. But yeah. I think it's also really cool. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, yeah. it, the idea of sitting there and having a, a school, having just kind of a, some normal dudes out there, <laughs> you know, I think it kind of creates probably buy-in for that program. We're not bringing anybody out of the flagship student section, no, are we? Not, no, uh, <laughs> not that I'm aware of. But, you know, I saw another one, and we, you may have been here when we talked about this, Coach Melton, where uh, Mike Leach, when he was at, I think, Texas Tech, they were having trouble with their kicker. And some guy at halftime like won a prize or yeah. something kicking. He was like, "Who is that guy?" <laughs> Next <laughs> week he's a kicker. <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny. Although in Williamson County, I'll be honest, we probably could find some really good kickers yeah, up no there doubt. in the crowd. <laughs> Absolutely, they're all over the place. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit more about tonight's game. Again, we're talking one of the oldest rivalries in Williamson County, Brentwood traveling to Franklin for our WCTV game of the week. Coach Finch, offensively. What are you looking for tonight, the progress you want to keep making offensively? I think we want to sit there and, and, and hopefully start fast, okay, have a, have a good start. Um, you know, the, the last two weeks we've had a great opening drive and then we kind of stalled out a little bit, so we'd like to be a little bit more consistent on offense. Uh, continue to mix it up, continue to not let them get comfortable, right, be able to run it, be able to throw it. Uh, and, and really just to play a clean football game. Uh, you know, cut down on penalties, cut down on pre-snap penalties. Uh, things like that, and I think just try to go out there and, and, and hopefully put our kids in position to, to put some points on the board and, and force Franklin to kind of try to match us in putting points up. Coach, I noticed uh, a couple of games ago you had the big running output, had a lot of yards, and then now teams may be focusing on that. Has that opened up the offense a little bit, that, that you've proven, hey, you give us the opportunity to run, we'll run. Take that away, we'll throw it. Does your offense feel more complete? than maybe it did four or five weeks ago. It well, definitely complement each other. I think we've got to do a better job. I think we ran it well last week. Um, so we've got to do a better job running the ball to open up the passing game and vice versa. I mean, they complement each other um, so well. So, you know, we, we definitely have to prove in that area and, and control, try to control the clock, um, control the line of scrimmage. Coach Finch mentioned that while I was over on either side of the football um, to give ourselves a shot. Coach Finch, defensively, what are some challenges for your team tonight? I think we've been impressed. I think they they run the ball really well. Uh, and I think over the past couple of weeks, we've seen that they're able to complete downfield passes. So you, you can't sit there and, and, and sell out on one thing. Uh, you would like to make them as one-dimensional as possible, but but right now they've shown that they can throw it downfield and, and they do a really good job with their gap scheme runs. Uh, probably the biggest thing is to sit there and, hey, limit big plays, right? And, and like Coach Melton said earlier, make them keep snapping the football, right? And if we can sit there and make them keep snapping the football, our odds go up. It's still high school football. The more times the offense snaps it, the more opportunity there is for a mistake to happen. So make them snap it, try to get some negative plays, try to limit the, the explosive plays. Coach Melton, you know, Brentwood's 6-0 for a reason, 2-0 in the league for a reason. 
Part of that is the offensive weapons they have. Sure. Defensively, you know, is it a pick your poison kind of thing? What do you What do you need to do for your team tonight defensively? Well, I mean, they do does a great job. Coach Finch and his staff do a great job of of numbers. They count your numbers and, and adjust based on what you got, based on how you're lined up. So we got to do a, you know, we got to do a great great job of adjusting to that of, uh, you know, fitting our gaps and running a lot of inside zones and things like that. So we've got to do a good job of fitting where we're supposed to fit and seeing what we're supposed to see, um, you know, and then tackling again. It comes down to that and eliminating space. I mean, those are a, they're a great job of creating it and a great job of adjusting to however you line up to whatever, they're, whatever formation they're in. Well, gentlemen, we're looking forward to tonight's matchup. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Always happy to be here. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.